But yeah, if I were to remake this, uh, that's how I would do it. <laughs> Originally, I wanted to make a video where I explained step by step how to make this, but it was so long and meticulous that I decided, hey, let me just give you the template and explain how I created it. Hi, I'm Gad Level, and this is Affinity, a brand new software that is completely free and is basically Photoshop, but free. Now, this is not my first Affinity video. Uh, if you haven't seen this one yet, I suggest you go watch it because that's where I explain all the core uh, functionalities of the software, but also some basic graphic design principles to get you going. So even if you're not interested in making thumbnails, this will teach you a lot about the software and just how to make anything really. All right, this is gonna be my first time sharing an affinity template. So I don't know how it's gonna really react. <laughs> how it's gonna work. There will be a link in the description to download the file. Uh, there will also be a link for the font because here I'm using a custom font that is called Zrod. So there it is, pretty simple stuff. Uh, the text is editable. So if you wanna turn this into a BRI back scene, for example, it'll be Pretty simple, just click on the text that you wanna change, press T for the text tool, uh, select starting here, and I can be right. Of course, you'll have to place them a little bit better. And back, press V for your move tool, and boom, just like that, a couple seconds, be right back. I just <laughs> realized the typo, Brr, right back, okay? There we go. <laughs> of course, for the character here, I have it uh, image PNG, you can change it. I just, I know Arc Raiders is kind of uh, popular right now. So I just went and type, you know, Arc Raider character PNG in Google. Uh, you can put this Fortnite or whatever character, or you can put a picture of yourself preferably really, but you know, I know you guys, I know you live streamers don't really like pictures of yourselves. Anyways, how did I make this? Honestly, like what you're seeing here is exactly what it is like you see this shape right there i used the pen tool and i went ahead and just made that shape okay well let me go ahead and create a new file and kind of go back and forth and show you the techniques all right so i would basically start with a big square for the background and then check the color for that nice something that i do a lot is make sure that i don't have an outline it doesn't seem to memorize like your previous settings most of the time. So if it adds an outline here, every shape that I create next is still going to add the outline, which is kind of annoying. But I'm also new to the software. So it's been like two weeks since it came out and I've done like three or four projects on it. All right. So second thing I do is create my main frame. OK, no 90s hackers here. All right. Pick the move tool to move it smack dab in the middle. OK, we're going to change the color. Oh, actually, I did remember my settings here and make it slightly lighter like that. And then from there, uh, very simple, hold control to sc and scroll to zoom in. You can hold middle mouse button to grab and move your frame around or press space bar and then click and move around. That's actually different from Photoshop. So pen tool, press P and uh, here's how it works. You put your, your nodes and it creates a shape, right? Boom. Just like we have our square, we can change the color and do all sorts of stuff. We can put an outline and all that. So it's kind of a vector. Let's bring it back. Now, how do I make precise drawings, if you will, with it? I can put one node here and I'm going to hold shift and it's actually going to project and tell me where it's going to go. So it gives me basically straight lines holding shift, but it also gives me, you know, horizontal, um, well, vertical, horizontal and 45 degree. So just based on that, I can just go click. 45 click, go down, click, 45 click, go down, click, and 45 click. And if I have an issue, for example, I want this to be perfectly aligned. Maybe there's another way, but usually I would just click somewhere that is approximate. I would stop holding shift, finish this. And the advantage here is that you can move those around, but you have to hold control. If you hold control, you can move your nodes, if you will, wherever you want. So I can hold shift now. And shift usually gives you like proportion and, and things like that. And sometimes it'll show you some guides that might help you. For example, here, it's not showing me how to make this straight. What I do is press control R, which brings out the rulers. You might not have this, but if you press control R, those will appear. And what you can do is basically click on them. For example, vertical ruler here, I'm going to click drag and it's going to snap to my nodes or it snaps to the selected node. And that's fine. I'm going to let it snap to the one at the bottom. And then I'm going to move the one at the top. Hold control to move, click. And now I'm going to hold shift so it doesn't, you know, doesn't mess around too much. We stay a horizontal and boom, now I have a straight line. Okay, what I can do with that is again, get rid of the outline and make it slightly, slightly brighter. I should, I should really make it way brighter for the example, but whatever. 
Now I clicked on the move tool and I'm just gonna bring it to the side, that corner there. Let me remove this, okay? And honestly, that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's all you need to know in order to make a design just like this one. That's all I did for everything. See those little things here? This is supposed to be for social media. Same thing, I just used the pen tool. Uh, this right there, you can see it's not perfectly symmetrical. Same thing, this thing in the corner, same thing. Just use the pen tool, learn how to use it. You can also do curves with it, but in this case, you know, to have something kind of like sci-fi, a bunch of 45 degree angle diagonal lines will give you that gaming and tech look, if you will, or a little futuristic-ish. Something that I would probably do differently, or actually, let me actually give you a concrete example of creating all those little assets. Um, and you can look up sci-fi assets on Google, it will give you a bunch of examples. See, I looked up sci-fi UI assets and look at that. Technically, you can find, if you can find some free ones, you can just import them and uh, place them on your design. But yeah, just take inspiration from this and you can create some pretty cool stuff. For example, I would prop for a corner, for example, I would start by doing my corner. I'm holding shift. Every time you see that yellow thing is that I'm holding shift, right? Boom. And I would zoom in, control scroll to zoom in. I would hold shift again. Boom. Go in 45 degree, 45 degree. Boom. It's like you really got to play around with it until you find like you do something that you actually like. I don't know. There's a certain flow that you basically pick up by doing it a lot of times and looking at other uh, sci-fi assets, honestly. Boom. And I would really shift here and finalize it. For example, that corner here does not look great. So with, with control, not only you can hold control to click and move things around, but you can also select multiple at once. For example, if I click in the void while holding control, you can see I'm selecting these two. That way I can hold control again and then move them, right? The problem is that I lose my 45 degree angle here. So I'm gonna do this, bring all of this down. But again, the whole 45 degree angle thing is not, is not a necessity, but once you continue moving things in a certain flow, it just looks better. It's something like that. And then what I would do is add an outline. I would pick my swatches. Let's make this one green. Outline and also the fill color to be the same. It's underneath everything. So I'm going to bring it up. And now we have, we created that asset from scratch, right? Instead of stealing one from Google, <laughs> we just made it from scratch. All right, go back to the move tool. And now you can also stretch it. It's not a huge deal since, you know, it's not something people are used to. Um, I usually tell people don't stretch anything, but this is the one case where you can stretch stuff. Just place it in a corner, right? Let me do a quick time lapse of me making that kind of stuff. All right, and now we can add some text. We can click on the T here, hold, and we want artistic, artistic text tool. You can type our text. Control A to select all of it. Uh, click on the A up top here to change the color. Go to the size over there. Pick the font top left. Let's choose a different font this time. That's the one I used. And uh, yeah, let's use square font. Select the move tool and we can make this. We're gonna make this huge this time. Make it a little different than the other one, uh, mostly because I want to show you some sort of effect. Okay, with the move tool, we can hold Alt, click, drag the duplicate. Press T to go back to your text tool. Click on this, Control A to select everything. S O O N, we can set this like that. And um, sometimes you want to, you know, change the text color to your accent color. In this case, we select that kind of greenish. I think that's not bad. What I'm going to do is select both of them and put them underneath those grayer spots like that. Then I can select those gray spots and lower their opacity up here. Just like that. Now I kind of want them to have like a glass effect and we're gonna, we're gonna deal with this a little bit later. Actually, let's deal with it right now. Why not? What I'm gonna do is go to my selection tool or rectangular marquee tool, if you will, select everything, press control shift C and then control V. So control shift C will copy everything within a selection, right? Control C will only copy whatever is in the layer, but Control Shift C will basically copy everything that's visible. So now we basically have a pure copy of this. Control D to deselect. And what we need to do is make this blurry. But at the bottom of my layers list, I can go to filters, go find the type of blur I want. It doesn't have to be just blur, but we'll we'll do uh, we'll keep it uh, kind of clean. Actually, let's do diffuse glow and play around with that a little bit. The threshold, there it is. It's not bad, but it's kind of giving me the effect that I would want with the blur. So uh, let's not choose this. Let's just go 
Gaussian blur. And we don't want too much, just enough for it to be visible, just like that. And now all we need is to create some sort of mask to only show underneath those uh, translucent gray areas, right? So what I can do is hold control on my keyboard and then click on the icon next to the layers that have that shape, right? So for me, it's polyline here and polyline there. So hold control, click on the icon here. So we have my selection. You can see it on the left here. And now to add an additional selection to that, I'm going to press control again, hold control and then shift and then click on that one. Nice. It's funny because it's the first time that I'm doing this in Affinity, but that's how it works in Photoshop. And they're so similar that it just works. So now with my layer that is, you know, the full screen thing selected, I'm going to select it and then I'm going to click on mask layer to mask everything else except that zone. Oop. And just like that, I have a slight blur effect, which might not be enough to be visible. So cool thing with Affinity is that pretty much everything is non-destructive. So my blur layer is still here. My blur uh, data is still here. So if I want to adjust the blur, I can do that. Isn't that cool? I'm going to exaggerate it just for the video, but isn't that so cool? <laughs> now that left green panel here, I actually didn't want it to be blurry, but I can just drag it up if I can find it. It's right there and I can put it on top of everything else. There you go. It still gives me a little bit of blur, but I have the sharp one on top of it. Control D to deselect once again. And now uh, if you want a character, for example, you can just find it on Google. If I type our creator's character PNG, use copyright materials at your own risk. This one is nice, but she's wearing orange. I don't know if that really fits our theme. We might be able to change the color actually. Uh, also, this is not transparent, but we'll figure it out. So right click, copy image, Go back to Affinity, Control V, Control Zoom Out, <laughs> Control Zoom Out, Control and Scroll to zoom out. And then we'll see the object selection tool. It's gonna take a little bit to load. I believe this is using AI basically to figure out like the objects in the scene. And then you can hover over certain parts to select them. If I click here, you'll see it selects her. Click there, boom, creates a selection. Hold Shift, remember that's how you had additional selections. Boom, boom, boom. And let me hear you say, well, well. It's not going to be perfect, but uh, it's going to get us there. So from there, what do you do? You create a mask, of course. So click bottom, boom, control D to deselect. Actually, this looks great, even though it's not perfect, not bad. If you want to modify the mask, you can see that it added that little layer here. You can uh, click Alt and then go back and actually see what it looks like. You can paint with white, with black or white to determine what is being hidden and what is being revealed. So black hides, white reveals. Just check your foreground and background color here. Here I have white, I'm on the brush tool, I'll lower it a little bit. And I know there's no seam here, so I can just click and drag a little clearer. Uh, but what if I press Control L to bring up the levels of the mask? Okay, that doesn't work. Oh yeah, you can really, really shape up the mask to make it perfect if you want to. But we don't have time, we're doing quick and dirty. Hold Alt and click on the mask again to get it look like. Perfect. You, you can just add a glow. So go to your layer effects, find outer glow. There it is. What color do you pick? Well, it depends. You decide if you want to go with white. In my case, gray, white, and uh, green. Why is it not showing? Oh, because I have the mask selected. Back out of that, go back, select the actual. But that's something you need to pay attention to. Sometimes things will not happen. That's because the mask is going to be highlighted. Make sure you have the image highlighted. Then go back, outer glow, and now it should be visible. There you go. We kind of want to mask uh, certain parts. So what I'm going to do is create a selection. Wait, and now I'm going to place it correctly. Right. And I wanted to cut at the bottom here. So I'm going to go find my frame that I have behind here I'm going to hold control. Boom. I'm going to hold alt and click on the mask. Remember the mask. So what I need to do to make sure that the bottom of the gun and her legs don't show is paint on this, but with black. Right. So B for your brush tool. But right now you can only paint within this, right? Because that's your selection. How do you invert your selection? Control shift I. Boom, you just learned something. How do you invert your foreground color and your background color? X. If they're not black and white, you press D to reset them. But in my case, they were already black and white. So let me go bigger brush, click here and just like that. We're going to leave the, the head poking out. We could cut it, but it's a cool little effect. It makes it a little bit 3D. Control D to deselect, hold Alt, click on the mask to reveal and here we are. I actually do not like the glow anymore, so I can double click on, oh, just click on the word effects next to your thing. I can turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. 
actually being affected by whatever's at the bottom here. So yeah, we're going to turn it off. Okay, final touches. You can do, uh, you can use assets or just random stuff. For example, uh, you can use light leaks. Again, copyright at your own risk. Like an image like this, you could right click, copy again, control V or just go edit, paste, place it, move tool, rotate that. Let's say I would want it somewhere like this. Cool and uh, blending mode. That's nice. Uh, you can get rid of the text with maybe the eraser brush tool. Just like that, you have your little thingy thing and it looks good. Um, you can also just duplicate this. Move tool, hold alt, drag, rotate. Change the size to just give it some variety. If you want to change the color, you can just play with the hue to make it maybe maybe match your main color better. So control U will bring you there. Now it's gonna change everything, but do not don't be scared. Okay. We're looking for some sort of green like this. Nice. We're gonna right click on HSL shift adjustment and we're gonna click on create clipping mask. What it's gonna do is basically cling to the layer underneath it. Okay, so now it's only set to this layer. I'll lower the saturation a little bit. We can still play around with it until we have something that looks good. Yeah, something like that. Now, same thing could be done for her. If you click on her image, control U, and you can already like preemptively do the clipping mask. Boom, just like that. And now play with the hue until her outfit kind of matches our accent color. Now, what we're going to do is hold control, click on her image layer, right? And then we're going to create a mask for our adjustment. I don't know if that works actually. What the hell? It created a solo mask layer. I'm, I'm not sure how that works in Affinity. So I'm going to try to grab it and place it on top of the adjustment. And that just works. So now if I hold alt and click on that mask, I know that everything is Everything that's white is going to change the color and everything that's black is going to be just the original color, right? Hold Alt again, click, press B for my brush tool. Make sure that I have black selected. Make sure I have the mask selected. If I click and drag, okay, that's weird. Oh no, wait, I messed up. So the, um, the mask is actually on that layer because the adjustment is also on that layer. So how do I separate them? There you go. I think that's separated this mask back on there. Okay, cool. All right. Now with the mask that is on the adjustment layer, there you go. You can see the, the actual preview. I can just do, I can just do this really, honestly, <laughs> I can do this, but if you want to go in and still preserve some of the original color, or uh, you can also lower your opacity and make it a little subtle, but to be fair, since we're making some sort of banner or this, in this case, a starting soon screen, People expect it to be a little stylized, so it's not a huge deal if, you know, it's like, oh, why is she all green? Because I made that choice. And just like that, in a couple minutes, uh, you made, you made this. <laughs> you made that. But yeah, if I were to remake this, uh, that's how I would do it. <laughs> it's easier for me to explain to you like this than to just build it from scratch while I'm recording. And again, when it comes to assets from Google, light leaks is one. Lens flares are also pretty cool. Sometimes the right anamorphic lens flare will give you some pretty cool results. Just change the blending mode. You can also add grain or maybe a big chromatic aberration for your final touches. The world is ya oista. Check out the link in the description to get this one. And of course, let me know if you would like to see more affinity tutorials. You want to subscribe to not miss the next ones. But most importantly, set your notification to all. I stopped posting YouTube shorts, so you won't get notifications for those. Just the long form good stuff. Go out there, make me proud, get level out.